So what I'm doing is uh, using brake clean to clean this off. One of our sponsors sent us a bunch of stuff. Amzo Gym, thank you. And then uh, I'm gonna build a compound curve. Compound curve, what would you call it? Yeah. On the back of the fender of the car right now. I have one of the last panels that I need to build so I can start doing, uh, getting everything welded up and doing the body work. And then I wanna finish up the top of the car and the back part of the car um, around the trunk area. <clears throat> So that's what I'm working on today. Man, this metal's dirty. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll take a paper template. I'm making a template so that I can uh, mark that piece that I need to cut. You want to follow me over there? Mm -hmm. So I have all these pretty much done, but I'm going to build this piece right now. And all I'm going to do is take the paper template and lay it over there. Take a piece of a uh, uh, charcoal style gray chalk or a marker. It's like a crayon, I guess you call it. And one of the other tricks is is uh, the dirty hand, dirty hand technique is all you gotta do is put, put something on there and you can actually mark it this way without doing that, without even using a marker. But I'm gonna go ahead and mark it anyways, just because I want a nice fine line on here. And I'm just using the, the corner of the marker. It's like a octagon shape. There's our shape right there. Now I just gotta make it curve this way and curve this way and it'll work fine. Simple. <laughs> sure. Usually what I do is I cut this out, throw it on a piece of metal, and then uh, trace it out, and then use the beater bag, and the English wheel, the plenishing hammer, shrinking stump, pretty much every tool in the shop to shrink this piece of metal so that we can get this uh, set up for a fender. And it's a lot of work. Sorry to bore you guys with the boring stuff. So I got my template cut out now. So I kind of, it shows me where I need to go with the, uh, the shape. Doing like a real time video. Yep. Yeah, and you know, we are filming this in real time, so we're not gonna edit it or nothing like that. Go ahead and, you know, show you the time that it takes to do just one single panel on a car.
And I don't have time to weld the panel on today, but what I'll do is I will shape it and sit it on there, and then when I weld it, I'll try to do another video. So if you guys get time, go check out uh, some other channels. Got one of them. Uh, he's a new guy that we met, and we actually met him on a podcast, and we're hoping to meet him in Vegas. And he does a bunch of LS work, and the guy's like a genius. He's like a mad scientist with LS motors and and a super cool guy named Terry, and it's uh, Coverman66. Go check out his channel. And then uh, the crazy Canucks up in Canada, Dave and Jeff at Sobering Restorations. Uh, and Glenn. <laughs> and our other channel is uh, NZ Mopar, Glenn Ridd. And that's it. He's in uh, New Zealand right now. We're waiting, on, waiting for him to get here. I know if I don't wear some gloves, I'm going to end up cutting my hand. Didn't I just get you gloves? Yeah, they suck. Okay. I, now I know why they were in that box. <laughs> well, the fingers are burned up. And you can't even hardly move the fingers. So. Uh. Next thing I do is when I'm trying to build a panel, is I'll come over here and I'll put it on the car and see if it's kind of close. And then what I do is I put up and I flip it and I put hammer. And the reason I do that is you want to hammer on this side to raise the panel this way to raise it like this. So this is up and, and I know it goes that way. So kind of put yourself some reference marks on there. So then now we're going to take this over to the uh, beater bag and we're going to hammer like crazy on this thing and get it uh, you know, where we want it, the shape that we want it to be. <clears throat>
think I stretched it too far right there. <clears throat> And the same thing, use your bottom dolly and you want to raise it this way. So that's why I mark it like that. You can see how fast it'll knock these uh, dimples down. Try not to get my fingers right now. Hopefully this will stretch enough where it uh, fits in that panel. If not, I'll cut out another one. It's not a big deal. You know, don't be afraid to uh, try and try again. Mess up a panel. You know, mess it up. Save that metal for something else. Keep going. Sometimes you can't get them on the first try. How much that thing flex? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I was watching that a little bit ago. And you can just trim it if it's close, right? If it's close, yeah, you can trim it. But if it's too, oh yeah, too short, then there's no trimming. You can't yeah. stretch the metal that far. <laughs> we don't have a metal stretcher. <clears throat> Didn't you just do a video on a stretcher? What's the difference? <laughs> Different kind of stretcher. Oh, almost dropped the phone again. Oh my gosh, you in that damn thing? I know, my hand's going. You're gonna break my camera, I'm gonna be pissed. I won't break your camera. See, now you just knocked this out of the thing with your swearing, you crazy. <laughs> oh, that looks sick. Yeah, it's gonna be close, so. Mm -hmm. And then now, so now what I need to do is I need to stretch it this way. Um, no, actually that will work, so good. Got a little bit of a flat spot, so I'm going to raise it right here a little bit.
you have to raise the center of it? Yeah, now I'm gonna raise the center of it and I'm gonna tighten the English wheel a little bit and you're gonna see me kind of work just the center area right here. Instead of going all the way through like I was doing before. And, and I'm pushing down like this as I'm doing that right here on both sides. There it goes. You can actually feel the panel starting to lift up a little bit. So. You're not going to drop the camera, are you? Nope. All right. I've got one around my neck and the other one I might drop. Yeah? But my hand that's awake is holding it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you can definitely see. Well, at least I can. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera, but you can see that the center is raised more than the rest of it. I'm going to go this way for once. Now you gotta fight it to get it welded on there, but you can kind of start seeing that the, the shape right there. Okay, so you were trying to make sure that you had the middle rounded so it matches those, yep. that curve. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, so that, so that this curve right here comes down right here. Yeah. And that's why I raised a little bit more right there and then right here in the center, because I didn't want it to have a flat spot right here. When you bend it, when you bend it like this, see what happens? Oh. It flattens it out. And then that's why I wanted to set it up so that it's kind of hard to show you when it's not clamped on there, though. Right, know? right. But anyways, um, thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate you, all the support on the channel. Um, hit the notification button. Go check out those channels, Sober and Restoration and Coverman 66. Check them out. Good people. Awesome channel. Glenn Ridd, Mo, NZ Mopar. Awesome guy. Okay. He should be here soon. What's that? I was going to say that the Jag Fender he just built... Oh yeah, the Did Jack Fender turned out nice. Go check out his uh, his skills and stuff on his channel. And when he moves over here, I can't even imagine all the stuff we're gonna start building together. It's gonna be awesome. And uh, and there's Lily. And this is Lily, my baby girl right here. Um, I appreciate you guys watching though, and uh, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Give us a thumbs up and hit the bell. Later.